What's going on, everybody? Wait a minute. Ugh, there we go. That's a little bit better. How's everybody doing in these crazy times? All this stay at home, uh, social distancing, all that. We've been taking it pretty serious, so I've only been at home with my family or here at the shop completely by myself, no stops in between. And that's what I've been up to. Since it's been a little bit harder to go out and get material, or I haven't wanted to go out and get material just to make a video or a project, I uh, needed something else to work on. So right here I have the Blue Arc 140 MSI from Blue Demon. And they are actually the sponsor of this video. They sent this out a little while back. I have not put it together. So today in this video, I'm gonna walk us through setting up a MIG welder what it takes, maybe knock off some of the intimidation for somebody who's brand new to welding. This is also possibly a very good starter welder. It's well under $300 right now. I just checked it on jegs.com. And it's a 110 welder, so you don't need any special plug or 220 at your house if you just need to do some small projects. But yeah, let's get this thing set up and we'll see how it welds. All right, let's see what comes in the box. I said earlier during the intro, I think, uh, plugs into 110, it's actually 120 in the US, I think is the standard, which is what this welder is. That's just your standard wall outlet. I don't know why I always say 110. I just, I don't know. But uh, yeah, let's see what you get for less than $300. Now there are a few other things that you're gonna have to buy and it will go over those later. But as far as what comes in the box, It's a Blue Demon shirt. I'm not sure if uh, that's actually included with every welder. So there's the owner's manual, some kind of a tool, like a wrench, and it looks like a couple extra tips It's even more compact than I pictured. So in the box, of course, you have the MIG gun attached to the welder, ground clamp, and your 120 volt plug. Here, since this welder can do MIG or stick, is your, uh, whatever this is called, your rod holder, clamp, rod clamp. I don't know if that's the official term. I don't really do any stick welding. Now on the front of this, I can see right here that there's amperage control, but I'm really not sure what this one is. So I'm gonna have to break out the manual. All right, I think we're good. Even though this unit can stick weld, we're gonna be focused on MIG welding with the uh, assistance of a shielding gas. So for that over here, this is your wire speed and your amperage all in one, like most MIG welders. This one is displayed in meters per minute. I was told in future units, they might switch that to inches per minute. And then over here is your voltage adjustment. You can have it set to manual and have control over it, or you can set it to synergize and it will automatically set what it thinks you need based on your wire speed and amperage. And then you have a plus two volts or minus two volts to kind of fine tune that automatic adjustment. All right, I don't have any kind of a cart to put this on yet. And I would just set it right here on the edge of my table or back there, but my outlet I need to reach for the 120 plug is right there. So I'm just gonna try and put it over here, kind of where the vice is anyway, then we'll have this whole side of the table open. Some MIG welders where you can just MIG weld won't have all this with the ability to switch. It just might have one spot for the ground. But since you can stick weld on this, you can switch these back and forth to reverse your polarity. This is the positive and this is the negative. So since we're going to be MIG welding with unshielded standard wire, uh, we want the torch to be positive. And then the ground cable will go into the negative. I always like to put the side that the cable's going to on the ground clamp to the top because you know the top is bare metal. Sometimes tables will be painted underneath. So no matter what you clamp the ground to, you know that you're having good contact on some bare steel. All right, this cord should be long enough 
to reach from here. I didn't want to try an extension cord. I got to move it a little bit. I didn't want to lose any power by running an extension cord, so I wanted it to be short as possible. And this is on a 20 amp breaker. All right, gonna have to find a way to safely and secure my bottle. Okay, next I'm gonna pull the cap off and hook up our regulator. This is a regulator I got from Airgas. It's for MIG and TIG welding applications. The gas is a mixed gas, which is common in MIG welding. This is 75% argon, 25% carbon dioxide. If you're unfamiliar with hooking up any kind of gas lines in this style, you typically do not need any kind of thread lock on them. So we're gonna try it without it. That would be like this. We're gonna try it without it since it's just a fit in here. Same thing with this into the bottle. Usually when you tighten this up, it pushes this into like a race that fits that perfectly and seals up. So one end of our gas line will go into the gas port of the welder, 11 16 wrench. Like you don't have to kill it. The other side is just gonna go right into the regulator. I'm gonna tighten that up when I get on the bottle. Then the regulator on the bottle. This one's going to be a inch and an eighth. And same thing. I like to choke up on the wrench so that way I feel like I can, I'm pushing hard, but I don't wanna be here and twist it off. And now while it's in here, I'm gonna finish this one. Like I said, I don't know your level of expertise with this kind of stuff, but you know, just in case, this will be the only thing you have to undo when you change the bottle. This and this will just all stay hooked up. All right, I've got the welder unplugged and now I think we are ready to put some wire in it. This welder can take big and little spools of wire. This is just some um, ER70 mild steel, 30 thousandths. All right, to get the wire started, just loosen up this knob so you can flip it down. Let's you flip up this door. We'll feed it right to there until we get started. Going in the sleeve. Put a little bit of tension on it. And it's as simple as that to get the wire started being fed through the line. Um, you could get lucky and it could come out the tip just perfectly, but it's probably better to take off the nozzle, take off the tip and feed the wire out and then slide the tip back over the wire and put your nozzle back on. All right, we're almost there. And uh, since I don't weld dirty metal or on top of rust, I'm gonna clean these off. MIG welding is a much more forgiving process though than TIG welding, so you could get away without doing this, but I, I'm going to anyway. Okay, both of these pieces of steel come in at a whopping 40 thousandths, just over. And that's because I previously used these on a gate I made. And if you've ever built a gate, you don't want to use a lot of heavy steel and have this big heavy gate that's trying to rip the pole out of the ground. So we'll see how it does on this. And then we'll at least know if that's one project that this welder could handle. Now, this is my first welds with this machine. You can see it's brand new, haven't even done a practice round. So obviously there's gonna be a little bit of a trial and error. I'm gonna put it in synergize and put it dead center of the fine tuning. And for our wire speed, since it's relatively thin, we'll be down maybe here. I don't know, let's, 
give it a shot. Just gonna try and get a little tack on here. It's making me wonder if I need to run gas through this line. Let's try that. Okay, well I think that's what it was. Got her big goobery tack on there. It's not pretty, but I kept stacking the weld until I got all that porosity out of it. So now we'll tack the other side. Hopefully this one will be clean from the start. Much cleaner. I'm still getting this little nipple coming off of it. But it looks like the gas problem solved. It sounds good. We got that good, nice, crisp bacon sound. Um, so I think I'm gonna leave the settings right where I have them and try and run a little bit of a bead. Now I definitely did not fix this. You can see what I have going on here. Clearly I got something wrong. Now we're looking much better. It still sounds great. Even on the bad wells it sounded good. But uh, I think what we ran into was I had the gas turned up too high. Right now I'm down around 32 CFM. It's right at the bottom range of what that regulator recommends for MIG welding, but that seems to work a lot better. What also helped was pre-flowing and post-flowing the weld. So on this weld torch, if you just barely pull the trigger, you get gas and no wire. And you can kind of do the same thing at the end of your weld and let it sit a little bit while it cools down, just like you do in TIG welding. That eliminated that like growth off the weld where the weld just became contaminated immediately as soon as I was pulling the gas away. But yeah, let's try another one. Turn the gas down a little bit more. I'm gonna turn up my wire speed a little more. I haven't messed with the voltage. We're still on the automatic. Here's, here's what we're getting here. I mean, it's welding this really thin steel really nice. I mean, better than when I actually built my gate because I had a beefier machine, probably had too thick a wire in it and I was blowing holes in this all the time and I haven't put one hole in this yet. Let's see how it does on some thicker steel. Okay, here I have a piece of 3 16 welded in a T-joint and it's actually welded on one side and nothing on the other side. So we'll see how it does on this. I'm guessing I'm gonna have to turn us up. So we're gonna try about all the way three quarters to wide open. Now, I know this video is sponsored by Blue Demon, but I'm still gonna give a fair review. And I did notice that the numbers are a little small on the indicators. It didn't really, doesn't really bother me too much, but they did mention 
that in future models that are going to go into production are going to have digital readouts for both adjustments and the unit's still going to cost the same so that's kind of cool <laughs> I think I got her dialed in now. I actually had to back off the wire speed a little bit. I tried it wide open, it was too much. So I backed it off even more than what we started at. I think we have a good starting point. So let's try and run a full bead. Well guys, I have to say so far, I think it's a nice little unit. I had looked it up just a little bit ago and I saw it for just over $265 on JEGS, which is a smoking deal. This is the most inexpensive welder that I've ever welded with. Uh, I've never tried like the $100 Amazon deals, so I can't compare it to that. But for this price and how it welds, I say it's, it's definitely a great value. Obviously, the $265, $66 is not, you're not all in for that. You're going to have to get some welding wire and a gas bottle and a regulator. But beyond that and a, and a helmet and some gloves and some protective clothing if you don't have any of that. But beyond that, as far as the unit goes, I like it. There's a few things that I think could be a little differently, mainly the trigger. The gun feels substantial, it doesn't feel cheap. Mine has like a little bit of a wiggle right here. I'm, I'm almost positive I could fix that if I just messed with these screws right here. And if you don't do a ton of welding or you have a small project like maybe a gate and you just wanna do some welding in your garage, some MIG welding in your garage, some stick welding in your garage, this is definitely a good starting point. I hope you found something useful in this video, whether it was just of how to set up a welder. Maybe the idea of getting a welder shipped in and setting it up by yourself with little to no experience was just beyond what you were willing to do. But hopefully after seeing this video, you see it's not that hard. These 120 welders are really cool because you can just plug them right in in your garage. You don't have to have any special wiring like a 240 plug. So that's a bonus of them. I would like to in the future maybe review some more inexpensive welders. Maybe we will find that $100 welder on Amazon and see how it compares. Or maybe we'll find a good starter TIG welder and review one of those. But that's it as far as this video goes. If you liked it, I hope you give it a thumbs up. Stick around and subscribe if you're not already. Leave me a comment down below. I like talking to you guys down there. I also like talking with people on Instagram. I'm at Just Voss if you are on Instagram. Also, and that's it. I'll see you guys in the next one.